challenged me on the notion of African dash American. And he said, Dr. Ritchie, I want to be known not by any title, but I would prefer to be known as American rather than African American. What's wrong with that? And I said, first of all, young brother, American is a title as well. So if you're trying to avoid titles, calling yourself American is not the way to go. In addition to that, understand what African dash American means. That dash is an interruption in your African journey. But you'd rather be identified by the interruption rather than your origin. So I had to lay that knowledge on that brother. This brother sent me a text message earlier today. He said, Dr. Ritchie, you were right. See, it takes conversations like that. Those aren't easy conversations to have sometimes, especially given the era of social media and how people try to put you on flash for what you believe. We're gonna start with our panel discussion. That leads me into my first question, and I, I just want everyone to opine on this. Why is there such, why is there a feeling that somehow black folk or African folk in America want to distance themselves from the motherland. And I will go straight down the road on that. I mean, obviously, uh, peace to the brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, children, women. Uh, peace to the land, peace to the, uh, the cattle, and you know, everybody. But um, just uh, Ambassador Prince Michael, I want to say, um, mm, this, the, 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 the obvious is the programming. We understand that part. Um, people want to distance themselves from um, the stereotypes, the stigmas, and things like that. They want to escape oppression. So, I mean, to me, it's, it's a, that's, a, that's a, you know, pretty much a, a obvious one. We know the programming, and that's what we're dealing with now. So, you know, that's, that's why we are blessed to have solutions. Um, and, uh, you know, we will move forward. And, the, and when, when everyone is uh, ready, you know, those, they will join, you know, but we stay focused on solutions for the most part. Um, and I guess I'll end my answer with that. Hi everybody, I'm Jackie Johnson of Profile Africa, Brand Strategy Public Relations Agency. Um, I live part-time in South Africa and I really want to start by answering the question by saying I'm actually a better African-American for living in Africa. It's absolutely given me a sense of identity that only Africa could give. And when it comes to addressing the issue as to why some African-Americans want to distance themselves, it is us breaking the curse. That was the whole thing when, if we go back as far as even Kuta Kente's story about how he refused to call himself Toby and many others took that position, but it ended with their hands and feet being chopped off. So creating that fear factor that by the second or third generation of Africans who had been brought to America to be slaves, they already understood never talk about Africa. But I do want to say that Africa is booming. Seven out of 10 of the world's fastest growing economies are on the continent of Africa. And don't get left behind. Wake up, close that divide. I'm the first one in my family's bloodline to make it back to Africa. And many of us will be, amen? And so the clarion call has been made and our ancestors are speaking. I hear them all the time. And it absolutely guides what I do. But I do want to say that this is the work of our generation. And it is to close that divide. And it is to write a bright new story about Africa. So that there will be no fear. They love us. If we go and give love, we will receive love. Thank you. Uh, Dinah Stamir, I have a platform called Search for Ruru. Uh, I think the reason why a lot of black Americans are descendants of uh, slave, the slave trade, why they tend to distance themselves from Africa is because, I mean, we're coming up on the 400 year, I guess, anniversary 
in regards to the when we first arrived here um, here in America. And fundamentally, I mean, we're for the most part, Af I'm, I don't want to say, we're, we're fundamentally American um, for the most part since we've been here for so long. We're black American. Um, you know, most of us, we've been completely disconnected from the continent. Uh, me personally, I think the continent has done a terrible job in regards to reaching out to uh, the descendants of the slave trade. Um, and then for the most part, a lot of us, um, we've taken up the flag of Pan-Africanism. You know, I'm very blunt when I say the burden of Pan-Africanism is, um, we're, we're wearing the, we carry the burden of Pan-Africanism as black Americans. So I think a lot of us see that. So that's why a lot of us um, were primarily referred to us as black Americans versus African Americans, because again, I mean, fundamentally, we're our own tribe since we've been here 400 years without little to know um, outreach coming from the continent to us uh, descendants of the slave trade. But hopefully that will change. I know Ghana, uh, they have a big program in place or a program um, you know, in place in regards to reaching back out to us. Um, so hopefully that will go well. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, Africa is still our birthright. Uh, we have as much right or claim to that continent as anybody born on the continent. Uh, so don't uh, forget that. So that's why you know I spend most of my time going back and forth and reaching out and building that bridge because it's important because at the end of the day that's our birthright. And um, though for the Black Americans who consider themselves African, don't let anybody tell you that you're not African. Uh, no one is in position to uh, say that. So, but at the same time, I do uh, understand why some uh, might not claim African and claim Black American instead because again. Uh, 400 years, I mean, we've been pretty much on our own. And so we've pretty much created our own tribe, so. I've heard that being African-American is to be African without memory and to be American without privilege. And I think it's very difficult to identify with something that you feel maybe doesn't identify with you. So going back to that connection, I think that particularly for many Latino countries and where there are groups of Afro-Latinos, like Afro-Mexicans or Afro-Brazilians, Afro-Colombians, many times it's coming from the top down where the government is dictating your identity. The government is removing your language, removing your customs, removing your land. And by the time it gets around to today's generations, what do you have left to identify with? So I think that that identity is something that's slowly coming back, particularly with the globalization that we have today. It's, it's a lot easier to pick up the phone or pick up even Google and learn about it. But it's something that if you don't even know what you're looking for, it can be hard to find. So for me, I will say that I have never identified, well, not never, but I in recent years have not identified as African-American because to me that hyphen, I've never really thought about it as representing the journey away from Africa. I've thought about it as representing living in the hyphen, living in the hyphen between African and American, living in the hyphen between Latina and American, living in the hyphen between being Afro and being Latina. Like what does that all mean? So um, for me, it's a question of identity that I'm slowly trying to get back to. Well, based on you know the question that he asked, there are groups of people in our community that no 